Welcome back. We're at lesson five now, and we're continuing with the Sunny Hills of Berra, composed by John Dwyer. It's the jig in the key of G minor. We're again capoed at the third fret. We're capoed at F, and we're accompanying with the E minor shapes, as we did in the previous part. So, <clears throat> just a little thing to note on that. Um, a little technique, it's, it's, it's not exactly precise, but while I'm playing the jig, I'm not fully strumming all of the strings all of the time. I'm not. I'm doing something that I kind of would call informally cutting up the chord. So it's kind of like a little bit of picking. So it's as if I was playing each, some strings um, individually sometimes. So I'm just cutting up the chord, so it's like. It doesn't exactly matter where your, your, your plectrum hits what string. I mean, if you want to get really precise about it, you can decide this beforehand, but it's, it's a matter of playing it over and, uh, and trying a few things out and, and you're kind of picking through the chord. So it gives you a little quieter shape, a little bit more subdued, but it, it's appropriate for this tune also. So in the first part, you might have remembered. <laughs> between both and you, so you can play around with this and see where where you feel like doing this this is a little bit more advanced in terms of the right hand you know you can do some small tech practicing techniques you could take three strings beside each other and it doesn't even matter where your fingers are you could decide this for for a D shape and you could play so you could play it down up down it's still the same structure down up down all the time a little bit more refined and you can try this with any kind of little chords and if, as you get more advanced you might try it with some partial chords. So I'm just running up my first finger on the D string and I'm just doing the alternate picking for each of the three notes. These little things. So that's kind of a little bit of the feeling of the sound there. So something to be aware of and to, to, to look out for what players do. You see this in bazooki players also. So we'll continue with the second part of the Sunny Hills of Berra. Um, that's just a little aside. So um, let's take the first four bars of part B and go through the chords. So we are going to play one bar of E minor shape to one bar of D. bar of B minor shape back to a bar of E minor shape so it's a bar of E minor to D shape to B minor shape back to E minor shape and again I'm probably using up this cutting up technique really it's this kind of tune that really lends itself to it So we'll try that with Duran playing the first four bars of part B of the Sunny Hills. Okay. So after four, three, four. So there we are. We'll try that again a couple of times just to keep it in our head. So after four, three, four. That was mostly strumming the chord through. We'll do it one more time and I'll cut up the chord a little bit. So after four, three, four. Okay, so that's the first four bars of part B. And we'll finish up then with the last four bars <clears throat> and then we'll run through all of part B together and finish with the tune. So um, the, part, the chords go something like this. I'll play it once more and then we'll talk through what they are. So bar 
bar five it was an A sus shape to a D shape. Bar six was a G shape to a D over F sharp shape. F sharp in the bass. Bar seven was a B minor shape. And bar eight was an E minor shape. So we had A sus to D, G to D over F, and B minor. So let's try that a couple of times through with Duran. So after four, three, four. So, we've survived that. Let's put the first four bars and second four bars of part B together. So, all of the second part. So, after four, three, four. So there we are. That's all of the second part of John Dwyer's and let's finish off by playing the tune all once through. So the A part and then repeat it and then B part and repeat it. Okay. That's John Dwyer's, all of the tune played. And um, you notice maybe just before we finish the lesson of a couple of times where I might have just done one strum instead of three. So sometimes that gives a little bit of space for it. So yeah, I might have done that towards the end of the tune. Sometimes these can signal either a change in tune or yeah, towards the end of a piece. So. <laughs> little things to be aware of. So that's it for this lesson. We'll see you back in the next lesson for more.